Hello everybody and welcome back to MotoGP Career Mode. I'm still in the Moto2 class vying to win the overall championship and uh, you saw in the last episode I was beaten by my uh, closest rivals uh, Johan Zarco and Sam Lowe's so that meant I lost some ground in the championship but I made it up straight away by winning the British Grand Prix at Silverstone but uh, I have a little uh, photograph to show you uh, and uh, it's how I crossed the line in the race and uh, this is what happened so would you believe I hit the wall uh, trying to celebrate on the edge of the track and uh, my rider fell off his bike crossed the line d dismounted but it all counts in motorsport so I was still granted my victory but a very embarrassing way to win a Grand Prix falling off uh, your motorcycle. But anyway, uh, an objectives update from my um, agent says I should finish 8th place minimum every Grand Prix and that should be manageable. I haven't finished outside the top 5 since that disaster in Argentina. So today is going to be the um, Misano Grand Prix uh, representing uh, San Marino, of course. So uh, let's take a look at the World Championship uh, entering the race so incredibly Zarco is back on top of the championship by just one point Sam Lowe's is uh, three points back after a poor result at his home Grand Prix so the pressure really is on now any more mistakes from the three protagonists and their title dreams will be over so let's um, take a look at Misano there it is uh, declared as a San Marino Grand Prix so um, let's try and get a good result here guys and girls Wish me luck. Johan Zarco on pole position once more. And Sam Lowe's makes uh, it doubly difficult for me as he also lands on the front row. The best I could do was sixth position. Uh, Alex Rins was initially behind me by one thousandth of a second. But he's actually managed to come fourth overall. Folger uh, on the number 94 bike will be a spot ahead of me as well. So it's going to be another battle from... Uh, in the uh, sort of middle of the top 10 and I have to get to that podium if I'm going to uh, have any chance of uh, topping the world championship at the end of this Grand Prix and the Italian sunshine is well and truly here track temperature has reached 45 degrees with the air temperature at 32 that's not going to be nice on the tires uh, the wind direction is very gentle so by uh, the riders shouldn't have too many problems uh, managing their balance and um, it's just going to be a matter of who manages their tyres the best because it is just a seven lap sprint around the uh, Circuito de Marco Simoncelli and the lights go off and we're ready to go racing. Folger and Rins to my inside both go uh, side by side there into each other and we break now for the tight turn one and then going left for a very identical corner. I dive down the inside of Folger and Rins as well. I need that podium under all circumstances. Here we go. It's a good pass and now Rins wants a little bit of payback we go now for turn number four and Rins is down that has distracted me and I miss out on the apex completely so Alex Rins by falling off his bike has um, distracted me I lose the position back to Folger so now I need the fourth place back never mind taking Tito Rabat for third so Rins uh, is not out of the race uh, if I recall but he'll be starting all the way at the back now he has six laps to recover his uh, dismal situation Folger pulls out a small gap but this is probably the hardest corner on the track when your tires are worn out it's a double right apex and now we head into the sweeping section of the track you have to go flat out through most of this section to stand any chance of keeping up with the elite riders here we go for the tight right you've got to be very tricky uh, managing your throttle but I go around the outside of Folger it's a little bit cheaty but we'll have to uh, live and let live there um, I wasn't penalized but now breaking for the hairpin right and I've clashed with Tito Rabat that is totally out of order and we must take a rewind for that uh, reckless riding so you can see I'm on the AstroTurf my ideal trajectory is wrecked as a result and I just plowed into the side of the Spaniard Rabat so we now reset officially and now we have six more laps to go so we complete uh, one whole lap of Misano and I really really need to catch up to these guys to stand a chance we're back goes a little bit wide as the uh, Zarco and Lowe's just continue to dice and duel each other so there we go Lowe's with the quickest lap with 142.3 but we expect better as time goes on 
So let's fast forward for a little bit and see, look how the difference is as the uh, three guys pull away from me. It's already 1.2 seconds. We go back to regular time and Folger is to my outside and by breaking very late, trying to break check him, he has outwitted me and it's another battle for fourth. I need to get him back immediately. Here we go again, breaking. Oh, that's very, very uh, careless as I just plow into the back tire. And you can see, once he gets the superior getaway, I am left for dead. It's really just a matter of outsmarting the AI in the sweeping turn. So there we go, look at that, barely letting go of the throttle. And we go once more around the outside of the German. So there's the other right turn, slowing us down all the way to about 100 kilometers an hour and then we go down to 50 kilometers an hour for that turn it's a bit of a gain there 1.1 seconds but i lose out severely in sector two you'll probably notice it now back in the uh, fast forward mode um it's really these two corners that catch me out and it's already 1.6 seconds uh separating me from the podium and now here it's going to get even worse 2.2 seconds so that is just terrible now Folger wants payback this is where I keep catching him out and now he wants to frighten me into a situation that is really really risky from Folger but thankfully I keep my wits and I stay on the motorcycle but once more I'm going way out wide on the Astro turf in that corner it's just not friendly to my bike and the gap is now down to 1.3 seconds so I have to stop losing time in the first half of the track so I don't have to worry about making it all back in the second half of the track. So we're now halfway through the race, just as we cross the line now, lap four of seven, that'll be about half. So um, a very nasty exit out of that corner. I just got my acceleration wrong, but you can see the, tri the trio are just pulling away, but you notice Rabat is out of the slipstream of Zarco and Lowe's. That means he is slightly vulnerable. I take a penalty at last. I'm punished for using excess um, runoff area. So I have been penalized very slightly. But it, it's, it would be enough to prevent me from finishing on the podium in the case of a, of a photo finish. So it's 1.4 seconds now. Just trying desperately to catch up. But my t front tire, look how it compares to the rear tire, which is uh, a hard tire. Um, it's just very, very difficult to manage pace and uh, durability in these conditions when you're on a, you know, an inferior bike like the Tech 3. So it's about to go down to the canvas on lap 6 of 7. Um, and it's just a matter of staying on the bike. Now I can't afford to uh, use up my last rewind. And if I do, then it's just a matter of time. So I actually did end up falling on the, off the bike, but I had my last rewind ready. I uh, ran the curbs too hard on the um, flat out right hander and uh, I just bounced off the bike but I was able to uh, recover and uh, the best I can manage is a measly fourth position. It's nothing to be too upset about but you know you can see out front it looks like Johan Zarco is going to win the San Marino Grand Prix. Can we confirm that for you now? Yes, Zarco and Lowe's neck and neck, Tito Rabat third. And for the first time in a long time, I have to settle with best of the rest. But that has serious consequences for the championship, and I'm going to explain it to you now. So there we go after Zarco, Lowe's, Rabat, and myself, Folger, Morbidelli, Cortesi, Luti, Simeon, and I think it'd be uh, Simon. No, Calio completes the top 10. Then Simon, Agater, Marquez, Corsi, and Saharan are in the top 15. Alex Rins could only recover to 17th. You'll see him fall off the bike in the uh, replay in the background. But all 31 riders were able to finish the race with Zaidi in last place. Look at the background now. There goes Rins. He just took the too much curb in the apex and fell off. So the World Championship now looks like this for the Moto2 class. Zarco leads by eight points over Sam Lowe's. I fall 13 points back. Rabat and Rins are very much irrelevant now. They're uh, an eternity behind, but still after Salam, no one else has scored a World Championship point. So Kallax lead the Constructor Championship, no real surprise there. Speed up, regain on Tech 3, and Suter still on absolutely not. So my experience doesn't go up too much. It's level 67, which is really, really good uh, for a beginner at these kind of games. And then my um, credits go up to 88,000 or 881,000 
Then my fan total is 400, 446,466. So a bit of a tongue twister there. And now the cutscene I wish I could forget. It's basically just getting a bit of a sympathetic eye from the uh, race engineer. So let's go back to the main menu and talk more about the result. There you have it everybody, my worst result in a very long time and uh, you can see the weaknesses of my uh, Tech 3 bike. The tyre wear is very very bad but uh, if I don't use the soft tyre on the front I feel I'd lose too much time anyway but it's something I have to consider because Aragon is a very similar track in terms of climate and uh, challenge so if I'm going to reclaim my place as a title contender then I'm going to have to win at that track. Um, the ones that are weak for me are coming up thick and fast so something will have to be done about that but anyway um, we'll have to uh, work even harder for the next episode uh, Marquez and Quattarero have won their classes as well as uh, Johan Zarco he's absolutely delighted as you can expect it gives him a little bit of a cushion uh, in the standings and um, you can just reflect yeah, I'm now 13 points back just one mistake can cost you so so dearly in this uh, competition but that's the way it goes uh, Mark Marquez leads in MotoGP uh, 6 points clear and then Danny Kent has a 28 point lead again it's been shrunk as he was uh, not able to win today but if we have a look now at the um, calendar you see we have Aragon next that track is going to be similar to um, you know Misano I'm, I'm probably not going to win that one either but Japan, uh, Phillip Island, uh, Sepang and um, Valencia. I need to win all four of those races if I'm going to stand any chance of becoming the uh, new world champion for Moto2. So uh, the next episode will be in Aragon and then uh, Phillip Island and Valencia or Malaysia and Valencia I think all have to come. So uh, I hope you can join me for the Aragon race and then I hope the twin, twin ring Mategi uh, treats me well. So until that next time I'll uh, speak to you again later. Bye for now everybody.